Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's free CompTIA A plus certification training course. I'm James Messer, and in this module, we're going to look at I.O. interfaces, the input output interfaces on your computer. This comes from the CompTIA A plus exam requirements of the 220 701 Essentials Exam, Section 1.2 where we need to know all about these different I.O. interfaces, sound and video and USB and serial and firewire and et cetera and et cetera. There are so many different ports on the back of your computer for input and output. And for your A-plus exam, you need to be able to look at any one of those and know exactly what it is. So you're going to learn a lot about all of these interfaces in this module. Every motherboard is just full of interfaces because that's the way that we get information into our computer and information out of our computer. So on the back of your interface, you're going to find a lot of integrated inputs and outputs that are on the back. You may find that there are expansion cards that even add additional inputs and outputs onto your computer. And your goal is to be able to look at the back of your computer, point to a port, and know exactly what kind of port that is, know exactly what kind of format that is. And that's an important piece because on your exam, you may be given a picture of a port, or you may be given a description of a port, and you're going to have to figure out what they're talking about when they're referring to that port. Let's step through a number, number of these. Let's start with audio ports. And audio ports are pretty easy to find because they're these 3.5 millimeter, what we call tip ring sleeve plugs, or TRS plugs. And very, very often, we'll just refer to them as audio plugs, or refer to them as an eighth inch plug or a three and a half millimeter plug. They're all the same thing. Uh, you'll sometimes see them referred to as TRS connections, but very rarely do we call them that. It's usually on a description page of something we're buying for a cable, for instance. You'll also notice there are a number of colors here. And in an industry where there's so much differentiation, what we've tried to do with ports is really, diff really define the ports, the colors of the ports very, very well. So hopefully, you'll always see the same colors for the different things you're plugging in, but it's not always that way. Plus, if you're working on a machine and the plugs are on the back of the computer and you're reaching around, you're trying to figure this out in the dark, and you can't really see what's back there, the color doesn't help you very much. And that sometimes becomes a challenge because all of these ports they're exactly the same size. It's very easy to plug speakers into a microphone port or a microphone into speaker ports. So you always have to double check your connections and make sure that you're plugging into the right port. And very often, if you have a, a flashlight or you can read exactly what it says on the back of the motherboard, that'll help you understand exactly that you're plugging the microphone into the right place and the speakers into the right place. With the advent of larger LCD interfaces and digital technologies, we've also seen a number of different video ports. So when you look at the back of a computer or the back of a docking station for a laptop, you may see a lot of different, or you may see all of these interfaces on the same device. Let's start with one that's very, very common. It's one that's been around almost forever, it seems. It's called VGA, Video Graphics Array. This is a port that's defined as a DE15. It's a 15-pin port, 15 pins on this. And the size of that is an E. It's a DE size. And that's what, that's what we get on a VGA type connection. So anytime you see a 15-pin connector, or you see that it is a small type interface like this with that DE size, you can almost always assume that's going to be a VGA video connection. There are a number of digital type connections, both analog and digital, on your computer. One that's very, very common is DVI. DVI supports a lot of different video formats. It supports analog output. It supports digital output. It supports multiple video cards, multiple video devices on that same uh, digital video interface card. Uh, so you'll see this very large interface with all of these different pins on it. And there will often be a number of different type of connectors on the other side of it, depending on whether it's digital or whether it's uh, analog or whether it's supporting multiple uh, different uh, uh, screens. It just depends on what the type of DVI is you have. So make sure you refer to the manufacturer's uh, guidelines as to the type of DVI connection you have. You may have something that is uh, also a very common new digital output called HDMI. This is high definition multimedia interface. This is always a digital connection. And HDMI, we're seeing more and more, especially on laptops. So we can plug in and get a high resolution output from that, all digital, but it takes a very, very small form factor to be able to do that. HDMI also has an advantage of being able to send audio through that in different formats. So one connection, you've got both audio and video all coming through in digital right to your output. Very, very nice and easy way to plug in your system to some video. 
If you've plugged in any type of keyboard or mouse or other peripheral lately, then you've probably plugged it into a USB port. And these USB universal serial bus ports are very, very common now on almost every computer you'll find. Although the ports look exactly alike, very similar between devices, there are differences in the type of speeds that are supported on these. And there's three primary USB types. One of the original kind, USB 1.0, was a very low speed interface that ran at one and a half megabits per second. You really don't see that very much on the newer systems. In fact, it didn't last very long until USB 1.1 was out. We call that full speed USB, and it ran, runs at 12 megabits per second. But almost every new computer these days is what we call a USB 2.0 port. And you'll notice the big difference here, 480 megabits per second. So if you're plugging in a hard drive, you're plugging in a flash memory stick, and you want the highest throughput that you're going to get, it's this USB 2.0 running at 480 megabits per second. And you'll know pretty quick if you plug into a slower port, your operating system usually says you're plugging in a high speed device into a slow port. You may not get the throughput that you expect. Uh, that's probably because the particular machine you're using has a USB 1.1 or a USB 1.0 port on it. Coming soon, and we're starting to see these slowly rolled out as the specification is finished, is USB 3.0. This is going to run at, at what we call super speed. That is the official speed of USB 3.0 which runs at a blindingly fast 4.8 gigabits per second. So we're looking at really the latest generation of USB is going to be, well, super speed, just like the name implies. And that's what we're going to plug all of our external devices to eventually, because as we get these higher and faster hard drives, these SSD drives that are all memory, we're going to need that kind of speed to go through there. And USB 3.0 is the technology that's going to allow us to do that. There are different kinds of USB ports. They didn't make this easy for us. There's all kinds. There's a type A and a type B. There's also a mini type ports as well. So the, the traditional USB ports, you'll probably always see type A on these mice and keyboards. But if you run into other devices that need better, stronger connectors, they'll often use these type B plugs because they're squarer. They'll fit easier. A lot of audio devices or higher end USB devices will have these. But if it's something like a phone or it's something that has very, very small connections to it, you may have something like these mini B or even a smaller kind, which is a micro type plug connection. Uh, that goes into your USB. So if you see any of these in a system, it's still USB. It's still the same type of interface. You can mix. It might have type A on one end, and it might have mini, mini B on the other end. It just depends on the type of connections that you're using in your computer. At the end of the day, it's all USB. It's all going to work together. Before there was USB, which was the universal serial port, there was just the well, the serial port, it was universal in itself. We just didn't know it at the time. We really see this on legacy hardware. It's really hard to find this on new computers, on new laptops. Uh, usually, we're, we're buying a USB interface to give us this nine pin serial interface out on the end of it. This is a serial, a DE serial connection, DE9 pin. There are also 25 pin connectors, a DB25 serial port that you may find on really, really legacy products. You don't really see much of the 25 pin anymore. Notice that the size is exactly the same size as a VGA port. This is a DE connector. But notice there are only nine pins inside of it. So if you're looking at this, on a back of a computer, you'll also notice that the video, the DE15 video connection, is one that is a female connection, and this one is a male connection on the back. So there's differences in the types of pins and the way they look on the back. So you should be able to look at the back of a keyboard and know instantly that's video, that's serial port.